The year is 2009. A company by the name of Slightly Mad Studios is formed and release a game by the name of Need for Speed Shift in the same year. Hey kids, do you like Pro Street? We'll get a load of this. The reviewers were loving it, and so two years later, a sequel appeared. This also went down well with reviewers. But as per usual, this is EA we're talking about, and so as soon as they saw a development team improving, they simply told them to fuck off. Which wasn't very nice. They released a game the following year with Rombax Games. This one didn't go down as well, in fact you've probably never heard of it. And then there was silence. Until three years later when they resurfaced with a game called Project Cars, a revolutionary racing sim that would revolutionise the revolutionary revolutionization. Intense racing? Yeah, it's got that. A vast track selection? Absolutely yes. Beautiful graphics? How stunning they are. Flying cars? Wait, that's not on the script. It was an instant success. Which of course prompts for there to be a sequel. And two years later? We got one, and they all lived happily ever after. Unless you count Fast and Furious Crossroads, which could easily be mistaken for something that came out in 2005, but no, this is in fact a 2020 release. Which I'm sure you can imagine didn't go down well. PS2 Vin Diesel was not getting our hopes up. Oh yeah, they were also acquired by Codemasters late last year, for the grand sum of uh, <clears throat> 30 million dollars. That's almost enough money to afford American healthcare. So why am I telling you all this? Well, obviously, it's to stretch out the runtime. One day, Slightly Mad Studios got a knock at the door. It's a development team named Reza Studios. Here's a recreation of how that conversation went. So, uh, what brings you here then? Money! Okay, yeah, I'm interested. My development studio would like to use your game engine. We also create racing simulator, and we think yours is very, very good. We are Brazilian and want your game to have more Brazil in it because our country good and best and love motorsport too, but nobody can afford to do it. But your game not have enough Brazil and so we want to do it more. Please can we have a game engine, okay? So you're wanting to make a Brazilian motorsport knockoff sequel for a game that's already a sequel using our game engine that we used to make the game in the first place. Yes. Uh, I, 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 uh, okay, yeah, fuck Yay. it, dude. I'm, okay. I'm, you might as well go and just do, do whatever, man. It's, it doesn't even matter, like, fuck it. Automobilista 2 released on Steam Early Access on April 1st, 2020. And this is no April Fool's joke. The original Automobilista is a racing sim released in early 2016. And you're probably wondering from the background footage why it looks like a game from the mid-2000s. And that's because it was using the R-Factor engine. You see, the formula here is genius. Just take everyone else's stuff. Add Brazilian flags everywhere, and you've got yourself a pretty well-rounded sim. And I know I'm joking about all this, but the first game is probably one of my favourite racing sims of all time. But that's because R Factor 2 is my favourite sim, and this game is just R Factor 2 with Brazilian fancy dress. What the fuck's even happening? But now we have the sequel. The sequel to the Project Cars sequel made by different people, but not quite equal. Before we jump on the game, please subscribe. We're trying to push for 250,000 and need all the support we can get. Also leave a like to appease my cripplingly low self-esteem. And that's all. Thank you, okay. The first thing you'll see upon loading up the game are the five main options. Single race, test day, championship that doesn't work, oh neither does time trial, but multiplayer actually does. In single race mode we can get a good idea on how the race setup works. In the race settings we can change the time and date. As you can see here, it is summer in uh, November 30th. There are five seasons to choose from and uh, yes, yes I, I said five. Five seasons. Spring, summer. Autumn, winter, snow. Snow. My favourite season. Because it just couldn't be like weather, like, you know, the rest of the things here. In the session settings, you can turn on practice or qualifying. It's the same system as Project Cars 2, of course. No surprises here. Vehicle selection is pretty self-explanatory. You find a vehicle and you select it. There's a decent amount of choice. There's 37 different race divisions and 19 of which are open wheeled. So if you're an open wheel motorsports fan, this may just be the game for you. Oh wait, hang on a minute. It says the Formula V12 has a V8. Oh, so does the uh, Formula V10 and uh, the Formula Trainer doesn't have an engine at all. I 
don't think this like VW Schrock was a V12. I wonder how much horsepower the Mitsubishi Evo has. Let's have a look. Zero horsepower, zero kilograms, zero newton means of torque, and zero speed gearbox. Brilliant. <laughs> I can't wait to drive this. Sadly, I can confirm, no. The Fiat Uno does not, in fact, have a front-wheel drive V8. You're probably just as disappointed as I am. Bad mark for Riza Studios there. Moving on from the car selection page, we have circuit selection. There they are, you've seen them now. Opponent settings, there's really no point mentioning. It's all the fucking same as Project Cars 2 with some fancy red bits. However, multi-class does allow for you to mix rental carts with racing trucks, so we all know how that will turn out. It always makes me happy when I find racing sims that give you the ability to do stuff like this because, um, you know, once in a while, all sense of sanity goes out the window and you decide, I want to crash a cart into a fucking truck. Okay, so we're starting behind all the trucks, fifth in class, 21st overall. Oh my god. Oh my lord. The trucks are a little bit faster, it has to be said. We're gonna hold the inside, be defensive against the trucks. Jo jo I give up on this. Jo kill me. Please just kill me. Yes, we are missing a wheel, but the rest of the cart is completely undamaged, so I don't see the problem here. Oh god, that's not a nice sight to see. Hello boys, do you mind helping out a three-wheeled disabled cart, please? I need help. Yes, thank you. Please give me a lift. Mercedes, you've eaten me alive. No, no, no. Jesus Christ. Here we go. Great. Thrilling, thrilling simulator. Nice. 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 Good. Right. Great. Oh my god. The, all the trucks are trying to pit. I wish I could see what's going on right now, but the... Cameras don't seem to be doing anything. Pit box currently occupied. Yeah, that's that's probably the least of your concerns here. There isn't really much else to say about this game at the moment in its current stages. I've taken the piss out of it a lot in this video already, and that's because if you're looking for a serious review, you're on the wrong channel. However, I will break that clause on this one occasion, and I will give you a quick summary of my genuine thoughts about Automobilista 2. For starters, all jokes aside, do I think there's potential here? Yes, but I feel it's limited. Project Cars 2 was very hit and miss for hardcore sim fans. It's far from the most realistic sim, but it is enjoyable and I personally enjoyed Project Cars 2. The fact that Automobilista 2 is essentially another Project Cars 2 would make me a complete hypocrite if I were to say I didn't like this, considering there's so little between them, and even the HUD was the exact same just before release as seen in Jimmy Broadbent's video. It's the same problem I have with the first game. I love it, but only because I love R Factor. So when I say I enjoy Automobilista 2, am I complimenting Riza Studios or am I complimenting Slightly Mad Studios? It's an incredibly awkward and confusing question, but I suppose the answer is simply, if you like Project Cars 2, then you might enjoy this reskinned Brazilian Project Cars 2 with different cars and tracks and a whole lot of extra bugs but it's cheaper and so that makes it worth it? Or, or, or does it? However, what isn't cheaper is the season pass. 80 fucking pounds. Fair enough, it's supposedly going to cover two years worth of additional content. However, sweet shit. That is a lot of fucking money for a DLC, and at least nothing I've seen about the game so far has made that price justifiable to me. That's nearly a year's worth of iRacing subscription that would probably last me longer, be a more realistic sim, and on top of that, be far more esports ready, if that's the sort of thing you're looking for. Which, for a lot of sim racers, is the case these days. And before I round off, I know these are the main questions people are going to ask. Physics and force feedback. When I say physics, I'm referring to driving physics, and, like I say, it's just a minorly tweaked Project Cars 2. Do I think the minor tweaks are improvements? Yes, I actually do. Cars react to curbs a lot better now than in Project Cars 2. A little too much sometimes, particularly the V8 supercars, however, this was fixed in the first update, thankfully. Regarding damage, physics, I have absolutely no idea what's going on. Sometimes cars don't get damaged at all, sometimes the damage shows on the inside but not the outside, sometimes parts fall off, sometimes they don't, wheels can come off but other cars can survive like tanks, there seems to be zero consistency at all in the damage model, and sometimes you could be straight up starting a race and randomly acquire severe damage for no explainable reason only seconds after starting. Being very cautious when they're gonna break, so- SEVERE DAMAGE! What? 
<laughs> what? <laughs> what did I do? <laughs> I drove in a straight line. <laughs> we just started the fucking race, mate. Oh my god, you've killed people, man. Oh, you're murdering people. No, stop. What? Well, oh god. No, the front bu- Wait, hey, there's damage model. Wow, we discovered a damage model. It works. The front bumper fell off. And lastly, force feedback. Uh, sim fans are always going to be divided over whether force feedback is good or not in any sim. I personally feel like it's better than in Project Cars 2, but there are certainly reviews on Steam that criticise it. But I can imagine it will change and evolve and update throughout the game's life. The reviews, by the way, are very positive at the moment. 85% of the reviews are positive on Steam as I'm recording this. That's a lot more than I expected. But saying that, don't get me wrong, it is a good game. For early access, it is is going to require some polish and fixing, but for what it is at the end of the day, it's Project Cars 2 for half the price with just as much content. It's really hard to argue. Do I recommend it in its current stages? Well, if you've got a wheel and £25 to spare, go ahead. Or if you want to wait until it's updated further, this is also a fairly reasonable option. But don't overlook this game entirely just because it's essentially an unfinished Project Cars 2 reskin. Because Risa Studios are actually doing something with this, and in my opinion, it is an enjoyable racing sim game. It's just one that needs to be finished and a V8 Fiat Uno. So to summarize that entire ramble in one sentence, if you like Project Cars 2, you will probably like this game. If you don't like Project Cars 2, I don't know, fuck off. Hey there, I just finished recording this video and that race you were watching in the background there finished and at the end of the cooldown lap, my pit box was full. So an AI took over control of my vehicle and refused to pit for several laps and kept driving until the car literally ran out of fuel before the race could actually end. So if you do play this game, whatever you do, turn off cooldown lap in the settings if you actually want to finish a race. Because it doesn't fucking work.